Ticker symbol DGRW, or the Wisdom Tree US Quality Dividend Growth Fund ETF, has been on my radar for a while as a more dividend growth focused investor, even though it doesn't necessarily get as much love as something like SCHD. Now in this video we are going to break down everything there is to know about DGRW and why I personally think that this could be one of the best dividend growth ETFs across the entire market. Now stick around, drop a like down below, and subscribe for, for more high quality content like this. So heading over to the Wisdom Tree website, it says Wisdom Tree US Quality Dividend Growth Fund or DGRW. It says Wisdom Tree's US Quality Dividend Growth Fund seeks to track the investment results of dividend paying large cap companies with growth characteristics in the US equity markets. It says why DGRW gain access to the current investment landscape of US large cap dividend growing companies by applying quality and growth screens and also use as a complement to high yielding dividend strategies or as a replacement for large cap quality strategies. So because this ETF tracks large cap dividend growing companies, you're going to have some exposure to some of the highest quality companies in the world, and I'm going to show you exactly which ones here very soon. Now looking a little bit deeper into DGRW's performance on the max time frame since around 2013, so let's just say 10 or 11 years now, this ETF without dividends included is up around 157.28% and is currently trading towards the higher end of the 52 week range at around 63 or $64 per share with 53.69 being the low and 68.70 being the high. Now around 10 years ago, this ETF was trading around $27 or so. And as of right now, it's trading over double that. Now this might be one of my favorite parts of this ETF altogether is the actual holding breakdown and how diversified this ETF is. So this ETF's holding breakdowns is the majority technology, which means it is going to have a little bit higher beta than some of the other more similar ETFs out there. But that being said, with around 29 or 30% technology, it's going to give some nice exposure to technology, but also not make the entire ETF swing very violently on green or red days. The next biggest holding is consumer defensive at 16.5%, industrials at 14.4%, healthcare at 13.8%, financials at 12%, consumer cyclical at 9.4%, basic material at 2%, real estate at 1%, and then under 1% is energy, utility, and communication. Now, one of the main things I love about this ETF is the exposure to some of the biggest high quality large cap names in the US, Microsoft being a majority of this ETF. So I can't speak for everyone, but I'm not really a big fan of investing directly into things like Microsoft be because of the reason that I'm not too big of a fan of having that much exposure to a single name, although I do currently own 1,000 shares of Apple stock. But investing into something like DGRW, you are getting a nice amount of exposure sort of evenly throughout a lot of these different names. Names like Microsoft, Apple, Johnson & Johnson, Broadcom, Procter Gamble, The Home Depot, Merrick, Coca-Cola, Cisco, and Walmart. Now, although this video is not necessarily a comparison to DGRW compared to SCHD, and I probably honestly will make one of those videos in the future. I also like DGRW a little bit more than SEHD for this aspect at least because it has around 300 different stocks, 300 different holdings in the ETF, which means simply put, this ETF is going to be a little bit more diversified. And I would honestly say for more of a conservative, more low beta investor like myself, I'm actually a fan of that. And I'm also a huge fan that technology makes up the majority of this ETF. Now to get into something that's sort of negative when it comes to this ETF, I have to be honest, the expense ratio is kind of high a 0.28% expense ratio, considering something like SCHD has a 0.06 expense ratio, and a lot of the ETFs that are sort of built somewhat like this normally have much, much lower expense ratios. But that being said, as you will see in a second here, the 0.28% expense ratio is not really all that big of a deal once we look into the actual performance of this ETF historically. Next to get into the dividend that DGRW actually offers. The trailing 12 month dividend yield is just 1.93%, which does trail that of SEHD by quite a bit. Once again, not a comparison, just saying though. Now the trailing 12 month dividend growth rate is actually negative at almost 5%, but the three year dividend growth rate is 7.4, the five year is 7.17, and the 10 year is massive at 23.16. Now one thing that I do like about DGRW, but, but isn't necessarily necessary, is the fact that it does pay a dividend out on a monthly basis. And I guess this can be very helpful for people that are maybe living off the dividend or just wants more cash flow on a consistent basis, which I guess I am a fan of. But to look at some of the monthly dividends, they are sort of all over the place, which does probably skew the dividend growth rate at least trailing 12 months quite a bit. But DGRW pays anywhere from around 16 to 19 cents on a monthly basis to some of the low ends of around seven cents on a monthly basis. All in all, over the last 12 months, though, this ETF has paid around $1.22 per share. Now, once again, even though this isn't necessarily a comparison to SCHD, I thought it'd be interesting to see how DGRW has performed if you would look at it next to the SCHD ETF and go off the start date back to 2013 all the way until current date, 
with just $10,000 invested in DGRW. Over the last 11 or so years, the DGRW ETF with dividends reinvested has returned around 11.63%, or in cash aspect, the $10,000 has turned into around $31,240, which is a very impressive in my opinion. Now, during that same time frame, SCHD returned on an average basis per year around 10.8%. And the $10,000 from SCHD originally turned to $28,924 over the last 10-11 years. So what's honestly kind of shocking about that is that DGRW is not necessarily highlighted as much or really praised as much as the SCHD ETF when over the last 10.36 years, it's actually performed better. Now, without dividends included, it's still more the same. Over the last 10 years, DGRW's returned around 10.83% and SHD around 9.68%. So over the last 10 years, a $10,000 investment has turned to around $30,714, which is a very, very impressive return. Especially considering this ETF is relatively low beta and pays cash flow on a consistent basis. Now for myself as a more dividend growth focused investor that's constantly seeking out sort of low beta, super high quality dividend growth ETFs, I'll honestly say that DGRW is definitely going to be in my lineup of adding some shares of to my portfolio very soon here. For the most part, looking at the top holdings of this ETF, these are definitely names for the most part that I personally would love to have more exposure to, especially for more of a long-term holding. These days, when it comes to adding a new ETF in my portfolio, it's going to have to have a lot of these characteristics, if not all of them. It's going to have to have growth potential. It's going to have to pay a decent starting dividend. It's going to have to have dividend growth historically, a strong basket of holdings, and hopefully a fair expense ratio. Now, honestly, when I go down that entire list from my personal preference, it's sort of hard to find something that matches everything. But honestly, off of first glance, this ETF crosses off all that and more. Now, that being said, I'm still not necessarily thrilled about the fact that it has a 0.28% expense ratio, but that's most likely something I can get past. But when it comes to DGRW, the Wisdom Tree US Quality Dividend Growth Fund ETF. Is this currently an ETF that you have in your portfolio? Comment yes or no down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to please drop a like on it and subscribe for more future content like this. Thanks as always for stopping by. And if you are interested in investing, make sure to check out these recent videos I posted right here.